All right, so according to Google, or YouTube at least, I'm live. I'm going to do my best to talk into the camera because I'm very much not used to doing this. But first of all, a very happy new year to you all. Um, I hope I find most of you in, or at least all of you in good health and trying to get through all this craziness. Um, so yeah, uh, how are you all doing? Let me know. Uh, I'm okay. I'm uh, excited to be, <laughs> to be online, to put it that way. I'm going to grab a drink of my water here. So if you have any questions before we get started, just uh, just shout. And obviously, if anything is wrong with the stream, just mention it in the chat, and I'll see if I can fix it live. I tried to set it all up perfectly, so, yeah. Oh God. All right. 5.30 AM. Jeez. That's early or late, depending on <laughs> how you've scheduled your day, I guess. Cool shirt. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I had this for ages. It's like full of holes and stuff, and I'm still wearing it. Uh, so what time is it? Let me check and then, okay, we've got a few more minutes, so I'll answer some questions. Am I going to be showing us stuff I've been posting lately on Instagram? So yeah, uh, if you hadn't seen it yet tonight, I'm going to try and I wouldn't say recreate, but at least draw inspiration from the macro photos I was uh, posting the last couple days of like the lichen and uh, see if I can do something similar in Blender. We'll see. Uh, like I said, I don't really know how long I'm going to stream for. Um, obviously, the, the recording will always be available right after. So um, if we go long and people can't stay, that's fine. Um, but yeah, if if there's time, depending on how well it goes, I'm happy to show other stuff as well. I don't mind. Uh, yeah, as usual. Kind of just hanging out. So. Um, so let's see some more questions before we get started. Do you recommend using alpha builds for Blender? Um, if you want to try out new features, sure. If you're, um, but beware, you know, sometimes, some days, depending on if you build it yourself or you download it from the, the website, it might be broken. So the build that you're using that day might be messed up. Um, it can sometimes mess up your files. I haven't had it in the past, but the problem is if you're using new stuff, you can't really go back to an old version and work with it there. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see. Um, so, that time's in your country. So, it's 8.30 at night here. So, hello, viewer from Spain. Hello from Belgium. What is my accent? Oof. It's a lot of stuff. Um, I lived in Australia when I was a, a toddler. And then I lived in Ireland when I was a teenager. And... I have a lot of American friends, so it's like somewhere in between there, I would say. <laughs> okay, so one more minute. I'll ask a few more, a uh, few more questions. So let's see. One second. There's a bit of latency between sound and video. Aha. Uh -huh. Hmm. I'd have to look into that. I don't know if I can immediately fix it. Um, if it's really bad, let me know. But um. Yeah, I don't, yeah, <laughs> I'd have to introduce latency in one or the other. Uh, if you can let me know which is taking longer to arrive, if it's the video or the audio, because it seems pretty well synced here in OBS on my side. So there we go. Um, so let's see, Belgium, never knew Ghent. No, I'm in Antwerp actually, but um, I like Ghent, cool city. Do you know the country? Abkhazia. I do not, I have to admit. I had no idea that existed. Cool. Ghana, Poland. All right, people from everywhere. Brazil. Super, super cool. Okay, so latency is on the on the video. Okay, I'm streaming with a new setup, so I haven't really worked out all the kinks yet, but I'm not going to try and mess with that because that's going to take a long time to get right. Um, 
but thanks for letting me know. I'll keep an eye on it in the future so I can uh, so I can go. So I think most of you are here for Blender. So let's switch over to the screen here. And uh, if I forget at any point to switch over, which I've done in the past, just shout. <laughs> Let me know that we're still on the wrong screen. Um, so yeah, let's first of all open up what uh, we're going to be trying to recreate. And again, I say recreate, but it's going to be very loosely. So these are some macro images I shot uh, over the last few days, especially like these in particular with all the little like thingies sticking out. They're pretty cool. Like this is almost like this alien grapevine or something. I don't know. So just looking at these images, um, yeah, they're photographs. So the main things I'm going to, I think I'm going to be focusing on are like these shapes here, these little cups, and then figuring out a way to create sort of these underlying, I wouldn't call them leaves, but like pads. But then again, if you look close, we can zoom in on these. They're actually stuck together. I think that's going to be sort of the tricky part. Um, I haven't prepared anything, so I'm just going to go in blind and see how far I can get. This is actually one of my favorite ones because it really shows that structure well. To get the exact same thing is going to be tough uh, without sculpting, um, which we can always resort to if we have to, but we want to try and make it fun and see if we can generate some of this stuff. So I'm going to break it up into two parts. First, I'm going to start with these, um, these little cups. I think they're going to be the most fun. And then those underlying sort of big bits. Uh, yeah, let's try those afterwards. So let's start with the cup, shall we? Um, I'm going to keep that simple. So I'm just going to create a mesh and then collapse everything down. And I'm going to use a screw modifier for this. So where are we? screw. And if I move this on the X axis and extrude this up, so I'm just using single vertices and extruding them. Um, so let's see, maybe we can do something like this and then generate the little sort of cups themselves. Actually, let's extrude this down, something like this, uh, extrude this over on X, bring it down just a little bit. And then set this one to zero. There we go. Just zero it out. So this is just a base object. Let me throw on some subdivision modifier there and make sure merge is turned on. So now we have this, but we want to kind of have variations and not really have to do too much work for them. Let me just bring this down a little bit. So it's a little bit more, a little bit smaller. And I'll try and keep my eye on the chat as well in the meantime, but uh, it's going to be tough doing two or three things at once. So let's see. Um, maybe bring this down a little bit more so we get more of that sort of cup feeling. Anyway, we can tweak that if we have, if we want to. Let's see, merge here. Something like that. So. Let's see if we can use these individual vertices as a vertex group. So first I'm going to grab these and I'm going to call them top oh. and assign them. So let's see when we assign them and we add a displace modifier and we just say top. It's only going to affect those, but we want to displace it in the Z direction. So now you can see I'm just displacing these and I have this little control uh, that I can use, but more importantly, let's set a maximum of maybe 0.5 and set this to global. And then if we add in a texture and we make it rather large, hmm, what if I displace before I do the screw? There we go. Now, because they're single vertices, if I move this should have an effect on it. It is working, but not the way I would have expected. Uh, it's working because, let's see. I'm gonna use global here for a sec and use local space. So now if I move it, there we go. Now we get some variation in there because we're using this texture in a global, um, so world coordinates. So as 
I move this around, you can actually see it's sort of going to change shape. And the fact that they all sort of move individually is actually good for us, because um, that way we don't have to worry too much about getting the shape somewhat differently. And you can see when we go back and open these up, they're all a little bit different. Um, I'll look into maybe the smaller and the larger ones separately. But yeah, now we could really easily recreate some different stuff. But now that we have that group set up, let's see. We can't do anything else. Hmm. Just trying to think. Trying to make these wider, maybe. So let's add a second group and let's call this rim. And then we could just duplicate this one, set this to rim and move it on the x-axis. Now, as I move these around, they're going to get both wider and sort of chunkier and less chunky, which is kind of cool. This in itself is kind of a fun animation. The only problem is they seem to be overlapping every now and then, so we're going to have to make sure that doesn't happen. So in this case, you can see it's pushing it out. So one of the things we could do... Hmm... We move these up after. Does that help? A little bit, yeah. Seems to help a little bit. And maybe add another displace on the rim. Uh, actually, let's close that one and duplicate this one. But let's take away the texture. No, take it away rather than go into it and set this to normal. But we're going to do this after the screw modifier. So that way, and this is way too much, that way we can just sort of thicken up the uh, the top a little bit. You can see kind of getting rid of some of those issues. So that's cool. Um, so with that set up, let's see. I think I want to make this rim a little bit higher. Just to have them a bit more sort of cup-like. Yeah, there we go. I think we can exaggerate the uh, the top one here as well. Problem is, I want all of these to come together. At once. Um, let's see what are these results like. Let's start giving things names as well. So. This is the placement for the rim. I'm using the same texture for both, so that's good to know. So we want to say this is displacement height. Let's mess with this to see if we can't get anything a bit more interesting. There we go. Now we're going to get a bit more variation. Nice. So. Let me get these even more varied. There we go, wine glass for you. Well, that's not the best way of doing it, but it might work. So let's just leave it for now. I need an extra vertex there. I don't like what they're doing. Let's see. It's interesting that the displace needs to be negative. Oh, I can see what's happening. This always happens with the screw modifier. If I turn on my um, face orientation, this is uh, the other way around, because I always model on the right side. And if you model it on the right side, then your um, normals are inverted. So if you flip them, now this is going to make sense. Yes. That's why it was behaving oddly. So now when we push out, there we go. We get the correct sort of feel to it. Yeah, that's kind of nice. They're cool. Bring this out a little bit more. So we've got those. All right, that was, I wouldn't say easier than expected, but uh, what do we could call this one? Mesh dot top dot zero 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 because we're going to create a whole bunch of them and let's throw that into the collection of cups. And let's just disable that for now and create one of those bottom sort of um, planes. So what's the best way of approaching this now? Let's create a circle. Let's add 64 vertices. 
Um, what happens if we grid fill this? We get kind of a nice... Yeah, that's okay-ish. It's not perfect, but it works. So, uh, let's see. Loop tools. Relax. No, that's not helping. Normally the relax works pretty well, but... Uh, let's see where we get with this. So, the idea of this one is that we sort of push up the outside. So let's select the outer edge here. And the reason I'm creating these polygons uh, rather than just having them terminate into triangles is so I have a bit more even geometry, so to speak, to work with. It's not perfect, but it'll it'll do for now, I think. Um, so let's see. Let's add this to a vertex group. Let's call it edge. There we go. And if we go to weight paint mode, now we can see that edge. And one of the things I want to do is smooth these weights and do a number of iterations and expand it a little bit. So now we can get this edge to be completely red, pretty much. There we go. And it sort of falls off towards the middle. So now we have that edge done. And again, we're just going to displace this and play with it a little bit. Uh, so we're going to set this to a texture and use edge. There we go. And let's grab another distorted noise, maybe. That might work. You can see I'm just trying to create these ruffles. Um, and we can push these up a little bit further. And again, we could go in and tweak our weight paint a little bit. Uh, we smooth it again, but not quite as much. Can have it go in a little bit more towards the middle. There we go. And maybe let's set this to 0.5. Although then it's only going to be, yeah, I'm going to leave this at the zero. So they're like at the bottom. And then if I throw a subdivision modifier on here, because we have that a somewhat decent geometry. This is going to work quite nicely. And I'm trying to think of the best way to maybe push those ruffles out a little bit better. We can mess with the, the texture, I guess. It kind of work, but Okay, so one other thing you can do is if you throw another displace on top of this and you don't put any um, any texture in there, if I bring the strength down, you'll see this sort of pushes the polygons in over onto themselves. So you can get that feeling where they're like, yeah, this is really extreme, but if I do the edge again, you can kind of see what I mean. Like they try to, to ruffle over, so you can really overdo this. And then just bring it back a little bit with a smooth. No, not the factor, but the repeat. So now you get this sort of ruffled looking edge almost. Maybe not push them up quite as much. Bring the smooth down a little bit. This is a sort of a give and take here. But we need them to be a bit more irregular as well. So let's see if we add in another displace at the very start. And we set this one to X, and we can leave this one set to 0.5. And grab another texture here. We can sort of push this in one direction. Not the band, mind you. We can add another smooth here as well. So it's just a case of like smoothing and going back and messing with it. And you'll see this isn't the... Uh, the edge itself. There's some problems going on here. We might fix that, but I'm just going to try this and do the same thing on the Y axis. So that way you get sort of everything going in two axes. And I feel this displace is causing more harm than, oh, I forgot to set this to Z. That's why. So now this is only going to push up. There we go. Let's see. This displace is definitely causing some issues. Let's overdo the smooth, then we lose the detail. 
So yeah, this geometry is perfect, but we don't have to worry about that too much for now. You'll see why in just a second. So let's say that's one of those things. And if we go back and look real quick, it's not quite as we, so I'd have to think about how to do that. I was more, oh, scrolled by accident there. I was more sort of looking into the edges here and trying to figure out a good way to do those. Kind of works, but not as well as I would have expected. Hmm, what's going on? So maybe let's add some displace overall to those things as well, because you can see there's quite a bit going on. If I add in the subdivision first, we get a bit more kind of craziness, and that's okay. So I definitely want to have more X and Y going on here. And the reason I, I said we shouldn't worry too much about the overall shape is now I'm just going to solidify this and I'm totally going to cheat and add a remesh modifier to this and use voxel remeshing, which doesn't seem to be working. Uh -huh. It kind of works what if we use the good old smooth remesh. Are we getting anything that's usable? Not at all. Hmm. Seems I overestimated the power of the arena. That's okay, though. It's a lot of polygons, but that's not a bad thing. And smooth the ever living bejesus out of it. I'd say that kind of works for now. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm going to make sure I give everything some names here as well. Oh. This is used in X and Y. And this is the ruffles. Maybe it's just down to using a different texture map. Maybe something like a Vorn, that might work. Bring down the size a little bit. There we go, now we're getting more of those edges. Pushing up a bit crazy, so I might bring down the amount a little bit. There we go, this one that's sort of folded over is kind of annoying. But again, that's uh, just a product of the X and Y here. So it looks like the issue is in the X axis. So if we just bring this down a little bit, oh, there we go. You can see just having set this up, like you can just play with it and get crazy variations. Now you will sort of run into some issues here because of that sort of folding and stuff, but I'm not too worried about it. Once we populate this with other things, it's going to look pretty interesting. And again, we set all of this stuff to global. Uh, no, I'm setting the wrong things to global here. I want the coordinates to be global. Um, as we move this around now, we're going to get different variations of this. Or we could always just kind of go a bit further. No, let's leave it like this for now. Um, I'll look at the questions and comments in just a second. So let's increase this a little bit because they are quite thick. That could work. It's kind of fun. Uh, so let's see. Um, so happy new year. So good to see you back. Well, uh, good to see you here as well. Is this a Shrek ear modeling tutorial? Yeah, the cups were definitely Shrek's ear. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's possible to bake two objects in one diffuse texture. I don't know. Um, I'm sure if it's not possible easily, somebody's made an add-on for that. So maybe try RGP to XYZ. Oh yeah, that could work as well. But for now, I like the, the way this sort of pushes up because then we can put a whole bunch of them together. Um, 
Perhaps just use sculpting mode to create the exact patterns. So oh, where's the fun in that? <laughs> um, another level of clouds, maybe. Uh, distorted noise causes issues. Try increasing the thickness of the solidify. Oh yeah, yeah, that, that was a good idea. Um, but yeah. Uh, what is the purpose of a nabla in the displace texture? The only use I've found for it so far is when you use the texture force field. So there is a force field in which you can use a texture. So you can have hair and particles kind of move or deform along a 3D texture. And the nabla there kind of decides how much it affects it. I know it has some effect on it, but I don't know exactly what it does. Um, it's the only place I've found uh, any use for it. So yeah, and this this is like a super, it works, but you need to like go in and out of modes and stuff. It's kind of a pain in the butt to use, but there you go. So let's create if, like a bunch of these and maybe put them together. And let's actually see if we can toggle all of these in our viewport. There we go. So we can see our end result while we're working on it. It's going to duplicate a few of these. Maybe have them overlap a little bit so we get like one big thing. And we can move them around and control them as we need to. Remesh is slowing things down a little bit, but that's okay. There we go. That's kind of cool. I like the way these kind of flow together and create this middle portion. Just creates a bit more interest. I think just for the sake of it, what I might do is add one last displace right before the solidify. So just to give it a bit more sort of texture. Here we go. And let's maybe bring the voxel size up just a touch. Hopefully that might be Just to speed it up a tiny bit, even though this is getting real huge. So now it's going to explode completely because I could, should have set the strength down first. It's going to be a bit faster. There we go. And I still need to throw something in here. Does that have any effect? Let me just turn off the remesh and solidify for a sec just to speed things up. It did, but what I want to do is just call this speed bumps. And maybe bring this down in size just so we get a bit more flavor to the entire thing. So they get pushed out a little bit more even. There we go, because they're kind of chaotic. And maybe move this one over just a little bit so that while well, they do overlap. I could always go in and use proportional editing, but make sure only the connected, so we're only affecting that object. Let's kind of push it around until we get something that works. There we go. And that's kind of cool. This is the, probably one of the least optimal ways to do this, uh, but we're not really here for optimal, right? We're just here to have fun, so there we go. That works. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate this object. So we have something to emit particles from, and let's call it mesh base or whatever. And then let's call this emit dot base. And on this one, we're just going to delete the remesh and the solidify and on this one we're going to turn it on so that way we have single one with a sort of thing sticking out what happened there fascinating so when i remesh it it goes all funky why would you do that Great, I broke the remesh. <laughs> How did that even happen? Hmm. 
Okay. That has found an interesting bug or what? That's weird. I've never had issues with it. Let's try the smooth remeshing and see if that does the same thing. Okay, wild. Well, that's not really what we're looking for. If we increase the solidify, does that help? That's way too thick. I should have put zero, zero 0.5. Ah, do we crash blender? Please don't crash. Should be fine. And it is having a hard time with this. What? This is, I mean, it looks really cool, but. I think I just broke the remesh. <laughs> it's hilarious. All right, so I'm gonna turn it off. Okay, so this is the solidify, that's fine. So this is fairly thin. So we still have those issues. That's really weird. It's just creating these like nothing. There's no hidden modifiers anywhere. I'm not in edit mode. I'm not. That's. Well. That puts my idea to shame. <laughs> Let's see what's going on. If I bring this down real size, does that help? I mean, we're throwing kind of a complex problem at it, but this is. I've never seen this before. This is really cool. Okay. What if I turn off smooth shading? Does that help? Doubt it, but. Man, this is supposed to be like the most boss remesh thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Save the mesh. <laughs> I can uh, I can duplicate it real quick. Come on. Oh, I just thought of a way better way to do this. Oh, that would be really cool if I could do it that way. Man, it gets slow and weird, but yeah. Okay, so let's keep this one around. Um, the file is saved, or not yet, so let's call this... Um, Lycan.01. And this is in the completely the wrong place. Where did I put it? Oh, God. Now let's make a projects folder. Man, how did that... Okay, so let's try a different approach. Um, it was working just fine, but just for shits and giggles, let's see what we can do. So I just grab a plane here. I'm going to turn off optimal display. And if I use a cast modifier and set that to cylinder, is that going to give me anything? Nope, but cool nonetheless. Okay, if I add more, nope, uh, I'm going to use a circle, that's fine. Not that it matters that much, because they aren't really perfectly circular, but let's see. Uh, and then we're going to grid fill this again, so we have something to get started with. Um, hmm, <laughs> and just to satisfy, satisfy everybody's OCD, let's have these polygons flowing in the right direction with our axes. Again, not that it matters, but... Um, okay, so what was the other idea? So first of all, I'm going to solidify this and set the offset to 1, not 0.1. So now we just have this. And this is... Yeah, it might work, but it's not gonna... Hmm... <laughs> we'll see. I'll just try and see where it gets me. So I've been having a lot of fun um, with the volume to mesh or mesh to volume and volume to mesh modifiers. Let's create an empty volume. Let's call this volume 
space and let's call this mesh dot base dot base yeah this is the naming convention i've been using but yeah um what do we call it mesh dot it's not a leaf let's call it six like and then we know volume dot there we go so let's grab the mesh the volume let's grab the object here and let's turn off the exterior bandwidth and if we hide this one now and just set the density to something ludicrous like 50 and the voxels to make 128 to start with 256 there we go yeah because this is quite thin you need quite a lot of voxels to fill it in there we go now we have this but what we can do is we can use the volume displays the only issue is that it's going to go over the whole thing but it's going to give us way uh way cooler stuff sort of way more interesting uh yeah displacements Ooh. all right i'm going to take a break in a few minutes see there you go this is already looking way way more interesting only let's up this a little bit now you can see we're getting these interesting sort of waves and things and they can fold over each other so that's something the volume displays can do that other stuff can't do So this kind of solves more than one problem. Bring the size back down, let's see. Now remember, we still have those cups that we created earlier. This is kind of fun. Let's see if we use a different noise basis, if we get... So Voronoi is going to give you fun results. And actually, let's create a new mesh so we can actually see the mesh shape. Uh, and let's just delete all the vertices here. And let's grab the volume to mesh modifier and grab our like and volume. Here. So now we can see what's going on. And I don't know how fast this is going to be. Uh, it's still a bit on the slow side, but that's okay. Oh, I forgot about something. No, it's fine. Um, We'll use a lower resolution to kind of preview how this looks. And again, uh, Voronoi is not going to be the best base for this. So let's go back. And if we bring up the distortion amount we're going to get this really interesting looking thing there we go and that's almost starting to look a bit more like uh, what we had before and remember we still have the original base base plate thing here and this is being pushed into different directions because we can set up um our middle level here so if we set these all if we set the z to zero and then maybe yeah let's see, y to 0.5 now what we can do uh fun fact if you want to control this a little bit better let's say i only want this to happen in x and y for example um r g and b are automatically translated over to x and y so uh, x y and z so if you want to take out z for example you go into the colors you go into rgb your rgb here is basically going to be x y and z so i turn down b you'll see this is only being pushed in the X and Y axis. We only get displacement in the X and Y axis. Similarly, for any other axis, if we only want it on one axis or another, if we only want it on the Z axis, now it's only pushing up because I only have blue in there. And if we put all of them in, then it's just pushing on all of these different axes. So this is actually a lot more fun uh, to work with. Um, yeah, so there you go. That kind of works pretty well for that base it's not exactly the same but i'm not too worried about that again you know we're sort of battling battling time a little bit as well and maybe we can make this guy just a little bit thicker there we go and then we get a better base so let's see we're gonna have to up the voxel amount here get a somewhat smoother surface and if you get holes and things uh, in your mesh here, some of the stuff that you can try is just bring these values away from zero and one. I've noticed that they create these flat areas sometimes. And uh, if you increase the sample radius, something like two, you just get a little bit more edges in some cases. It takes a little bit longer to sample everything because it's trying to do its best, but it can help with closing up some of those holes. So. That looks kind of interesting. So let's duplicate that for now. And once that mesh is generated, it duplicates instantly, which is awesome. Uh, and let's 
convert this to a mesh. There we go. So we don't have to worry about the other stuff. So, and this is the mesh dot. Remesh. Remesh. Now the first one kind of remesh. <laughs> uh, and this is the mesh dot. So let's call it that and then put all this other stuff into a collection called crap. It's turned off so we don't have to deal with it anymore. So that one, that one, that one, that one, and volume, which we can turn off as well. It can go into the crap folder. There we go. So now let's go into this, and this is just a mesh. It's what is it? About 400,000 faces. That's okay. Um, we can always do some stuff to this, but let's just hit L and then invert to grab all the extra islands and throw them out. I just want one object to work with. And then I don't know if this is implemented in 2.91. Let's hope so. Ah, we've got these mesh filters, who, which are awesome. So one of the things you could do is throw on a smooth modifier um, and repeat this a whole bunch of times. And then you get a nice smoothed out mesh. You get these kind of weird things here, but you know, that looks cool anyway, it doesn't really matter. Um, but I found another way, because the smooth modifier can be quite slow. Uh, in sculpt mode, if you use the smooth mesh filter here, you can see it's instant. It's really nice to work with. Like I'm just moving my mouse left and right, and you can see it kind of smoothed out. Um, so that works quite nice. So let's delete the smooth here and just leave it for now. All right, so now I want to integrate those weird little cups into them. And as we saw in the photograph, they're kind of attached to it. Now, again, it's not going to be exactly the same, but uh, what we want to do is if I just turn this off and we'll turn on the cups here. Let's duplicate this guy a couple of times. And I wonder if we need to add one more thing. I think we should. So if we add another displace after the subdivision, and set it to, oh, set it to, what is it, the rim. Um, I want to set this to quite a large distorted noise. And I always keep going back to distorted noise because I just know it really well. There we go. So we can add a little bit more to it. Only, why is it? Making these weird. Oh, because the mid level is set to it. That's not so weird. There we go. Now they have just a little bit more, but maybe in this case we want RGB to XYZ. And if we set this to global and we move them around, you can see they sort of change in shape. Not as drastically as I thought they would. But again, that's because we're using quite a large texture. So if we bring this down again a little bit. There we go. Let's bring that distortion amount down a little bit so it's just a little bit softer. And as we move these around, we get different ones. So now what we can do is we can save, because I know this can be tricky sometimes. And instead of regular duplication, I'm going to Alt-D. So these are instances, but because they're modifiers, they produce a different result anyway. And I know that can make Blender a little bit crashy sometimes because it doesn't really understand how the data is linked anymore. So with these, one of the things I notice is that our first displace, or sorry, our second one on the Z-axis can definitely be a bit more extreme. The only issue is that we're going to get problems here. It's okay. Okay, so be it. That's fine. I don't mind. go in and individually tweak them but then they're no longer instances that's right we can turn off the cups turn on the lichen and we just want to have it emit from the top here so i'm going to go into weight paint make a really big brush Is that really the biggest brush i can make okay let's go blam and then we have pretty much all the things on the top selected and rather than giving it 
fall off. How do I change the fall off to be? I want the brush. No, there we go. Oh, I just want this to be full. So now when we make this bigger and we just go from the top, blam, we just get all the top uh, ones here. There we go. And let's see, what can we do to add to this? Because we want to have a look at that vertex group and let's call this um, particle underscore density. Let's start with that. We might be able to reuse it for the scale as well. Um, so let's add, start by adding a particle system. And I said I was going to take a break and I didn't. So let me do that in just a minute. And you can see where this is going already. Um, put the hair length to one. So whenever I bring in these things, they're going to look okay. So I'm going to render as collection and I want to have the as collection. And I have to rotate all of them because Blender is weird. And select all of them here. Why aren't you selecting? There we go. And switch to individual origins are Y 90 degrees. And then now when we go in and we say object rotation, it will be just fine. Nice. One of the things I've immediately noticed is I want to grab this and maybe bring this over on the x-axis just so they kind of get stuck in and maybe this one doesn't necessarily need to be that wide there we go let's turn off the cups again and that's looking kind of like any only thing we need to do is make sure we grab our density group so they're only getting they're only on the top here. And then obviously let's add some random scale to this. Really go overboard. And then the question is, how do we get them to stick together again? Um, do we need a length? So if we want the density to be we could try and do is create a vertex group. Okay, uh, I'll answer some questions first while I let that run in the back of my head and grab a, a drink real quick. So let's see. Uh, tries, yeah, one million triangles. Yeah. At one point, we were doing a couple million uh, polygons. Um, so, I'm just looking at the comments, so a lot of stuff about the weird remeshing still. And saved yet? No, no, I uh, have a bad habit of not saving stuff. Blender's two-minute autosave has saved my butt many, many times. Um, the only time I press save every single time is when I'm um, when I'm doing a render. So let's see. Uh, a little tryptophobia around here. Yeah, <laughs> I'm learning how to make realistic plant cells for school projects, so this really helps. Uh, I don't know if this is the most optimal way to do it, I think. <laughs> this might be the worst way to do it, but yeah. Um, yeah. RGB and texture mapping is that to XYZ. Why did I notice that before? Yeah, it it's such a like little thing, but once you uh, once you start messing around with it, there's a lot of fun to be had. So let's add more into this because obviously more is always better. The only problem with particles is that now we have a bunch of them stuck together. Um, but that's okay because we still need to figure out how we're gonna um, how we're gonna actually stick them to it. And I already have an idea, but I just want to make sure. Hmm, is there a better way? 
scatter these. Oh yeah, we're thinking about vertex groups. So let's try that first. I'm just going to turn this off for a second. So the idea is that I want to have sort of parts where there's bigger ones and then smaller ones surrounding it. So you would want a map, something like, and let's actually create a new vertex weight edit. And we're going to do the usual trick of using a texture for vertex weights. But um, what do I want to do? I want to create this particle. Uh, so let's call this, yeah, density two, density uh, texture. And let's go into that with the weight paint so we can actually see what we're doing as we're adding this in. So flip the fall off and group add it. And then if we ask add it here and here, we're going to get something cool. So Voronoi. Am I missing something? Set up correctly. Am I looking at the right one? Oh, I have to still select it. There we go. So now we get this Voronoi pattern. But the cool thing is when you think about this, um, you could have, and if we flip this around, so let's go into the color ramp, set this alpha. I don't know why this alpha is always set to zero. It doesn't make any sense, but there you go. Flip this. Now we get these dots. And if I then make this a little bit bigger, And we can kind of mess with the color ramp a little bit. There we go. You can have these sort of areas where the, the particles can spawn. And the cool thing is, um, what we can do is if we grab a, ooh, what's the best way to do this? Mm, vertex weight mix modifier. So I want to have this and the inverse of it, but I don't need to do that because I have those options in the in the particle settings anyway. So I'm just being thick here. Um, so if we now grab the density texture and we have to make sure use modifier stack is on, otherwise it won't work. You can see in the red parts, now we have more of them show up. So if we had a whole bunch of them, let's say we do a thousand of them. Actually see, it kind of follows it uh to where the red is going to have more of them and then the uh the blue parts are going to have less of them the cool thing is because we're using hair we can use the same one in the length slot but flip it around and now you'll have sort of bigger ones on the red and then smaller ones around but we actually want to flip one or the other around so i want to flip the density uh and now make sure this is working, is it? So why aren't you working? Let's go back and mess with our texture to see if anything pops up. Nope. It's funny how things work and then cease to work. Where are the particles here? So we've got this. Wow, am I totally missing something here? Or is it just because we're in weight paint mode? Ah, it's just because we're in weight paint mode. Typical. Okay, so now you can see I have places where there's like a few big ones and then there's a lot of smaller ones around it, which is a more natural, if you want to call it that, uh, sort of fall off. Oh, no, not one, but point one. There you go. So now you can see you have these a lot of these smaller ones kind of popping popping in, which is cool. I'm actually could control it a little bit better, but kind of stuck with these brute force controls. And maybe we don't make this completely black. And maybe don't make this completely white. So we have a little bit more to work with. There you go. And that feels a bit more natural, a bit more akin to what we were doing. It's still not perfect, but again, time constraints and everything. Uh, it is what it is, I guess. Um, nah. Let's see. I'm not going to do as many because it's going to take forever. I'm just going to bring down the number and maybe make them a little bit bigger. And these are pointing sort of the wrong direction, but that's okay. Um, let's actually get to what I was going to do with this. So I'm going to convert this particle system 
and now all of these uh, meshes are selected. First thing I'm going to do is just move them to their own collection. Uh, particles, just to keep things clean in case we mess something up. And I think, is the main thing still selected? No, it's not. So, we can close this, turn off base, and now... <laughs> oh yeah, that's the thing, because we were using those... We have a bunch of them pointing downwards. So one thing we could do is let's delete all of these guys and go back in. Uh, so right now, if we go into the weight paint, you'll see that we still have uh, stuff at the bottom. And remember, we made that one uh, for the top at the start, which was just called density. So one of the things we could do is just add in a vertex weight mix, move this up, and then we're going to mix the textured one with the density one, the original one, which just had the top polygons, but we want to set this to multiply. And now what this is going to do is it should, I think if we just set only A, there we go, it's going to take away those bottom ones and we still have uh, control procedurally as well. So if we now go back to the particle settings, which we're going to show up, if I go back to object mode, you'll see we don't have any of the ones at the bottom anymore. So now if we bring these up, Sort of get that effect a little bit. It looks kind of cool. So yeah, obviously you'll have some issues with the, the ones that are sticking this way. But we can clean this up pretty quick now. So let's convert this. And uh, again, move that into their own collection. And let's turn off the particle system. Or we can leave it on, but just hide hide this object, um, even though it's the base. So no, let's leave the particles. Let's just turn them off. There we go. So one of the things we want to look at is just the ones that are sticking in sort of weird directions. We have to do a little bit of manual labor here, but that's okay. So any of the ones that are sort of going in between these guys. And again, I'm doing this real quick, but we'll see. All the ones that sort of overlap might be interesting just to get rid of. Mm, this guy, maybe. These two. Let's just delete these. And now, one of the things, if we want to bring this all to uh, separate objects, one of the things we have to do is, first of all, make sure that all of these uh, object and data is single user because otherwise when you bring these together um, what was I going to say when you uh, and if I do this oh, that's okay that's fine that's weird the, uh, the displace is gone but that's because I made objects out of them and now everything's smaller so I kind of Shot myself in the foot on that one. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> so I'd have to do something else. That's okay. So let's duplicate this collection and let's call it cups meshes. There we go, and now these are all still different, but what we're going to do is first we're going to make these single user, so that way they're no longer instance of each other, and then we're going to convert these to a mesh, turn off that one, and then we go back into the lichen, uh, turn on the particle settings, and now you'll see they'll have that distortion still in them as long as I use the correct so, uh, not cups, particles, cups, meshes. There we go. We can play with the seed a little bit to see if we can find a better layout. Yeah, I like this one. That's kind of cool. Again, it's not perfect. Um, that's what I get for doing this live, but it's okay. I'm sure somebody out there could like do this with a volume or uh, sorry, a vertex. The what is it? I can't think of it now. Um, 
Not the regular displacement. What's the name? Wow. Totally blanking on it. That's fine. Somebody could probably do this with a shader in like 10 minutes, but... That's okay. So now we have all of these. I'm going to move these into cups, cup particles. Turn off the lichen for a sec so we have a bit more we can see. Grab some of the weirder ones. And depending on your camera angle, you probably don't even need to delete all of these. Like if you would set your camera up first, you could just delete the really obvious ones. And, you know, most of the time, most people don't even notice that many issues anyway. So it seems a little bit over the top. Let's delete this. And if we want a lot more of these to really get that same feeling as in the in one of those pictures where you could have a whole bunch of them that could work really well. Um, there's other ways of doing stuff, but yeah. This is what ended up happening tonight, so this one's kind of weird. Now we have something somewhat similar. Again, we could have added way more particles into this. And I'm just going to select hierarchy here where is that select objects there we go and again make sure before we all bring them together that we make them a single user and then we just grab one hit Control j and now they're all just one object and this is sort of where the fun starts so i'm going to make a duplicate of this lichen uh, so we don't have to deal with any of the other stuff that's on here so we can just Delete all the modifiers and the particle system. And we're going to add a boolean. We're going to union them with oh, these guys. And this is probably going to take a while. I should have set it to fast. We are dealing with like two and a half million triangles, so I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so let's have a look at the, the questions in the meantime. Well, this is probably kind of crashing on me. Um, so let's see. I'm really liking what I see there. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> Use my own pun against me. Um, vertex weight proximity to create clusters. Yeah, I could do that as well, I think. Um, volume to mesh approach. Yeah, I'll show a little bit. I've been working on a few cool images with that. Um, I'll show you some in, in just a second as well. Um, what about some frilly cups? Yeah, I could go in and tweak them even more if I wanted to. Um, again, it's just because of time constraints, we're already like an hour in, I think. So yeah, I've got to make sure that it stays interesting for people. Um, It'd be interesting to use the tissue add-on to base the weight on mesh curvature. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, tissue has a has a lot of really great options for interesting vertex groups. So, is there any way to do some self collision type of thing with hair so that they don't overlap? I think you can simulate hair, but I don't know how well self collision works in that. Um, I'm hoping with the geometry nodes that, uh, yeah, that. Um, we're going to get some kind of, kind of options to distribute non-intersecting stuff. Because right now, it's really cool that you can do it with nodes. But it's kind of the same as doing it with particles. So it's not really adding much. I'm sure it's faster. But because it's creating one big mesh, it's going to be slower in other ways. So it's like, I see what they're trying to do. But I feel like there's still some 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 things we need to think about to, to get this... Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, so uh, you gonna do the shade shading of this? Yeah, sure. We can look into shading a little bit as well. Um, yeah, so would have worked well. Tissue. Yeah. Okay. So we have this union now, which is all well and good. So I'm gonna convert this to a mesh again, and it's gonna take just as long. Um, so I can read a few more things. So good master. Hey man, how are you? I hope you're doing well. I hope you uh, had a nice New Year's and staying safe and all that. 
Oh, Jakob as well. Everybody's dropping in. Nice. <laughs> um come on so let me switch over back to the screen here and see if we can get into shading this a little bit i'm just kind of fixing the last little bits and bobs um so one of the things you could do now is actually go in um because I, I just boolean these which is really crude um one of the things i'm going to try and do now is see if i remesh this what happens maybe it'll like smooth out some of those uh bottom things again it's not perfect but we're just uh, we're just having fun. So craving on your modular sense since November could be worse. Yeah, yeah. I've gotten into other stuff as well with uh, all the lockdown. Well, obviously, you know, there's the baby, so the, that's that's taking a lot of time, and it's a lot of fun. So now we get all these funky, <laughs> somehow there's like ones where are, that's interesting. I think somewhere along the way, one of them had its, uh, had its modifiers turned off. <laughs> that's funny. So if you select all the non-manifold vertices where we get all the edges yes yeah, so let's just get rid of those so i think there might be one cup in there that wasn't perfect um so yeah what we can do now is we can try and remesh again i'm going to save at this point because it's going to get tricky now that's voxel remesh but you can already see what this is doing it's kind of we set this to smooth shading kind of linking some of the stuff together making it look a little bit more organic and that's just a case of seeing if we can find a nice sort of middle ground there we go that works pretty well it's not perfect um again i would go in and tweak a lot of this stuff to make sure it's working well but this really kind of brings them together and you get these organic looking forms a lot nicer so let's bring this down to 0 0.003 oh there we go we broke the remesh again let's try 42 no Go back to 0.5 that seems to be sort of the upper limit of it so let's apply that remesh there we go and let's just again go in hit l and then invert to get rid of all the extraneous stuff and yeah the remesh at smaller sizes i've noticed uh is doing some weird stuff i've been working for almost a year on a, on a research project with a lot of 3D printing, 3D printing shoes, actually. I've been designing shoes, wrapping them around people's feet for 3D printing, um, which I can't show yet, but once it's all done, I'll definitely have a lot to talk about, uh, which is going to be very interesting and a lot of fun. So let's see. Um, can we get this a little bit smoother? Go back into sculpt mode. Just smooth this all out a little bit. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, but that's okay. That works. How many polygons is this? 500,000. I'm not going to be able to subdivide this, am I? That's a shame. Subdivision surface just won't cut it. Yeah. I want the old one back. You can just throw this at it and be like, yeah, sure, no problem. So yeah, let's get into shading. Let's pick kind of a fun, uh, fun angle here. Maybe something like this. Oh. Uh, bring in the camera. Let's hunt for an interesting shot. So these are kind of fun. See, I like these big ones up at the front. It'll give us a bit more to work with. Oh. Let's tilt this a little bit. Yeah, that gets kind of the gist of it. Maybe if we scale it down and move it up a little bit. Try and frame this properly. There we go. That could work. So let's first maybe light this. Okay, I'm amazed that we started that quickly. Didn't have to do the whole calculating optics stuff.
Um, lighting, lighting, lighting. Let's add in some dramatic light. Still have to get used to using this. It actually works really well once you get a hang of it, but I always forget that it's there. You just point it at whatever you want the lamp to point at, which is nice. And let's bring this up a bit. We just want some lighting so we have something in our scene to work with. And where do I want the other light? Maybe around here. That'll work for now. Oh, I'm really bummed I can't use the subdivision modifier on this. I mean, I can try, but it's going to take forever, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not even going to try because it's going to end up crashing and I'm just going to get sad. Mm. Again, I miss the old subdivision modifier. It makes me sad. I'm going to bang on about it until until they sort it out somehow. It's just weird that we can't have it anymore. I understand why, but it still sucks. <laughs> uh, so let's see. I don't know why they changed this. The order, like when you make a new panel and you hit Shift F3, now uh, the first one it goes through is the compositor instead of the shading panel. So you have to hit it three times to get to the shading panel. Why? Why? You do a lot more shading than you do compositing. So, stuff to look kind of funky, huh? So you can see towards the edges it gets kind of and towards the the tops it's a bit different so i'll have to figure that out i don't know if we can get that done tonight but we'll do some basic streaming we can definitely do all these little details and other things uh no that's the wrong one there we go so obviously we're going to need a little bit of subsurface because it's going to make everything look cooler Just a little bit, and then we can change the color ourselves. And I found a really good trick to kind of fake subsurface, even if you want to call it that. It's, it doesn't look exactly the same, but what you can do is if you put a second shader in here, let's grab a diffuse shader. I'm just going to set this to red. What you can do in the light paths, you use the ray depth, I believe it is. Uh, with math node and you just tell it everything that's greater than one bounce i want you to use the other shader you get this really cool effect that it doesn't look like uh, subsurface scattering but it feels like it somehow so now all the bounce lighting in here is going to be red because our main diffuse pass is just white and every other bounce where the light is coming off it i think i think we can set this to zero there we go all the other bounces are going to be treated as this red shader, but you can play with this and kind of get interesting effects. And in our case, I think we can add a little bit of yellow in there because we want this green base. I mean, yellowish green, don't want it too. And I really like when I was taking these pictures and I processed them, I really, really pushed the colors very far on this. Um, it wasn't, like it was colorful, but it wasn't this colorful. Obviously, you get to play around with it a little bit. So, and in this case, I think our old friend, the pointiness node, pointiness, pointiness, geometry, pointiness is going to be our best friend. And let's pipe this into a color ramp so we can see what we're doing. There we go. That's what I was looking for. I can see all those little highlights on those edges. You can actually shade them. And this is going to look better depending on your... Um, uh, on uh, the amount of polygons in the mesh. But in this case, that could work. So let's actually... So I'm going to use this as the basis for maybe more stuff. So I'm just going to double color ramp it. And I'm going to make this first one black and the second one more yellowish. So now we've piped that in there. You can see this one gets sort of yellow around the edges, or at least it should. 
Let's change it. Oh yeah, you can see it a little bit in here, in the smaller ones. Again, it's not perfect, but if we bring this down, there we go. We get this nice kind of fall off on them. So let's have a look at the other sort of properties of the shader. There's a lot of those bumps and they can place. So that's why I wanted to use, set this up as a mask. So now what we can do is we can add in some of those bumps. Let's see, what am I going to use for this? Use a Voronoi. All right, set this to object. And then set the scale to maybe 500. That works. Uh, flip this over. Because we only want the insides. We want sort of the bumps. There we go. And then we could add a multiply node in just to bring these together. Converter, math, multiply, and now they're only going to show up on those same parts. Now, one of the things we might want to do is just mess with the power here, or we can do it with a color ramp as well. So we're just going to bring that mask in a little bit. The only problem is it's on the lichen, and I don't know if that's on here as well. It's similar, but it's only at the bottom. It's a tough one. I don't immediately can immediately think of a way to do that. Let's see, what are we getting from this? Hmm. Do we still have that? It's not going to be in there anymore, is it? Do we still have these weight paints? No, we don't. Oh man, that sucks. Obviously we remeshed it, so no surprise there, but hmm. Hmm. I want this to apply to the bottom. Now one of the things I can see is that the bottom here Let's see. And what we can do if we add another black one into this. We can kind of get it and if we fudge it a little bit. That's on the bottom of those as well. Hmm. And if we multiply this by itself again. Yeah, I'm getting kind of weird here, I know. I'm just trying to quickly think of stuff. Multiply it by that one again. Do we get anything? Not really, because we still get those edges. I just want the bottom, man. We're almost there. It's a case of tweaking this. And there we go. But anyway, we can get this out of the edges of those thingies. Come on. Oh, we're so close. This is like a super hacky way to do it because I'm a very lazy person, but yeah, that's about as good as it's going to get, I think. Unfortunately, is it even worth it if we add this in? Uh, we can see screen for this because it's black and white. Can you even see it? That is the question. No, I don't think so. Let's grab a little bit of subsurface, maybe anyway, just to have fun. And again, we're just being more inspired by it than anything else. And I definitely want to find a way Hmm. That kind of bums me out that I can't immediately think of something that might work, but it is what it is, I guess. If we add some bump into this. Hmm. 
me just set this a little bit bigger so you can see what we're doing. What does this even look like? Okay, so I'm getting some of those dots in there. Now they're kind of showing up. And that shouldn't be completely white, but just off-white. And let's make this one just a little bit darker as well. We can see the difference a bit more. So those white dots are show surely but slowly showing up. So if we turn off the subsurface, we can see it a little bit better. Yeah, kind of. It's definitely not one of the best things I've ever made, but there we go. Let's see what else are people saying. Um, uh, so Heinz says, nice to see you new stream. <laughs> Popcorn and blender open. <laughs> is the Joy Division shirt? Yes, it is. Um, although I have to admit, uh, while I like Joy Division, I have a hard time listening to them for more than like 30 minutes without getting utterly depressed. So yeah. Not the biggest fan, but always, always like the cover, uh, the album cover and the, the design. So I'll maybe scale this up a little bit. There we go. That's kind of starting to look like something. It's not perfect, but let's buff this into the subsurface color and maybe make it just a little bit darker. And bring this in. And then you're kind of getting there. So now we need sort of an overall um, look to this as well, because this bottom layer just needs a little bit more. Again, it's not perfect. It's far from it even. Obviously, I would spend a lot more time on this, but it was a fun challenge to try and do this. If we focus on these guys here. Or maybe if we focus on these dudes in the back. Yeah, that looks fun. Yeah, we got somewhere. I'm not super happy with it, but I'm happy enough with it. So, Musgrave textures are your best friends if you want just random noise-ish type stuff. In my mind, anyway. Let's grab this. And then what we're gonna do is we've got that point in a setup, but we want a bit more randomness in that. So uh, bring down the dimension, bring up the lacunarity and up the detail if you get really crazy stuff. Make sure it's set to object. Although I kind of like the way it wraps around stuff because it's kind of compressing it because it's using the generated coordinates and sort of squishing it down so we've got a very wide but not very high object um and then it's a case of throwing in the map range node and then bringing down the minimums i believe and bringing up the maximums to get a bit more go on there we go maybe bring the detail down we don't need that much over the top detail bring the scale down as also well, gets a little bit bigger Something like that. There we go. And then how can we use this to affect the other one? First of all, we want to do... So we've got this point in this. So let's have some fun with it and kind of go crazy, right? So let's grab a hue and saturation. Now this is our slider. And one of the things we can do is set this to... 4 and 6 and then we plug this into the hue you'll see this will actually affect the hue of the uh the colors of all these things and it's funny that it works out to be the ones on the top that are changed in color that's actually kind of cool so we bring in the whole shader and we can control the amount of hue so if you set this to zero and this one to one we get crazy sort of hue streaking and variations within them. So you can see here, 
the Musgrave is doing its work and you can see, let me just turn off the subsurface again because it's getting real slow. Um, you can see what's happening here as well, which is kind of cool. And I still want to make sure those are being screened over and why am I not seeing them? It should be a lot brighter. I mean, ads gonna work, but it's gonna mess up our color our colors. But really, not that bright. So we do need to multiply this again as well. Uh, let's add in hue saturation set the value to five. Aha! Nope, that wasn't what I wanted. What is going on? Too many multiply nodes. That's what happens. Yeah, there's too much going on here. If I turn this one off, there we're going to get the white dots. Which is also kind of fun. Again, maybe we should just go off the deep end at this point because we're not really... Uh, if we flip this around. Yeah, flipping this over actually kind of gave us what we wanted. Let's uh, tone down the hue variations here. So maybe 0.35 to 0.55 or 0.65 rather. That is one ugly color. Cool. Not that it been being that ended up being a lot more fun than I thought it would be. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to add another bump into here. And then bring over this Musgrave texture. God, this is a horrible shader, but yeah. I'm trying to do too many things at once, but that's okay. Set it to bump. Plug that into the height. I'm sorry if it's not super visible. I'm trying to keep this somewhat organized. Uh, and I plug this into the bump node, but that was unnecessary. So if we plug that one into normal, and then that one. Now we can get the extra sort of bump from the Musgrave mixed in. But we definitely want that to be very subtle. Point one, maybe. Uh, point two. There we go, that's popping up, so it's kind of in between. You can even invert it if you wanted to, to push it in. That actually looks a bit more, a uh, bit better. So what I'm going to do, oh no, it doesn't matter because it mixes them together anyway. So let's look at the overall hue here. So just by adding a math node and set the add and kind of control the overall hue a little bit more. That red is kind of fun. We were going for green originally, green and yellow. So let's bring that back a little bit. And maybe just bump up the saturation while we're at it, just to have a bit of fun with it. Yes, this is bad things to your colors and all that. But I don't care. Just have a good time. Just bringing in that subsurface makes it so much better. So let's switch over to multi-scatter GGX because it's going to give us a bit more stuff going on again i would for the end result i would go in and maybe add more details in the shader and all of these parts and maybe paint in a very quick uh vertex color mask or something like that i wonder if dirty vertex colors could work for this anyway i'm getting off track it's gonna take forever otherwise um and we could even still change sort of that fake sss effect that we were talking about and just add a little bit more color and different parts so this purple looks kind of fun, that green. Pink, red maybe. Somewhere between pink and red. That makes it a lot warmer, which is quite nice. Now, this shader still needs a lot of work, a lot of work, but that's okay. We want to definitely add a clear coat because all of this stuff needs to look really, really wet, soggy. And maybe bring up the mix of refraction a little bit to really push the uh, the reflections. Looking juicy. That's what we want. We want the juice. 
that is going to take it taken out of context so bad. So what am I getting here? The map range node. Maybe I want to use that same one to affect. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a dot node real quick. A reroute node. Grab that, move it over here. Grab another one. It should have done that a little bit quicker. So now we just have the raw, um, the raw Musgrave text here. So we can do another map range on it. Ah, where are we? And then no, what am I doing? Yeah, no, that's what I want to do. That's fine. Um, so again, map the range here a little bit. Bring that up so we have a bit less contrast in the map because get kind of wild there we go and now that we have that we can plug this into our base roughness and we're going to get different roughnesses Ooh, that's extremely wet looking but i actually kind of like that that's yeah let's work on our lighting a little bit more bring this up make it more of a happy place um yeah, we want a little bit of lighting from the front here, but we don't want it looking janky. So I'm going to bring this up, bring it up here. We want to make sure that it's not like pointing too much in the same direction of the camera. Otherwise, it's going to look really horrible. So let's move this over a little bit. We can move this over a little bit more even. Go. Bring down. There we go. Now we get a lot of reflections and we haven't gotten to the fun part yet. Now we're going to go full disco mode and add some color into this. This back one, we might want to keep white, but let's just try a different color. Yeah, that's what I figured. Whoa, we're getting real trippy here. I hope at least somebody is on drugs to enjoy this. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so yeah, let's add some blue. There we go. That is one of the weirdest renders I've made in a little while. So I think that definitely qualifies. And then to make it look really small, let's play with the f-stop. Let's render that out and just for fun, do some random compositing on that. I wonder... No, that's fine. Let's actually just render this. And uh, while it's rendering, I'll switch over again. Oop. Yeah, had some uh, issues there. Yeah, it's rendering on the GPU, so I hope everything's still streaming properly, but it's only temporary, so that's fine. Um, so let's go up a little bit because I missed a whole bunch of stuff here. We probably make it cool like in cloth sculpting for sure. For sure. I totally spaced on that. Could have started with that, really. You're going to make more courses like RTMG in the future. I don't know. Um, RTMG has been way more successful than I ever imagined it to be. Um, before I do anything, sort of new course-ish, I want to add to that one at least one chapter of something that might be interesting. I don't know what it is yet, so don't ask. I don't know when. Uh, time has been, yeah, harder to find since I became a dad, so, yeah. Um, but if there's, yeah, if I find an interesting topic or something, I'm happy to, to do one. It's just, I put a lot into our team, it was a lot of work, and if I do another one, I want it to be at least, you know, as interesting as that one. So I'm going to have to take some time to think about something. Um, are you at all working with the quad remesher add-on? No, I don't use it that much, actually. Um, I just use the regular voxel remesh. I use the, uh, what is it? Brick remesh. Um, not brick, the... Uh, Wow, blocks remesh a lot for like artistic effect. But yeah, I don't really use the quad remesh all that much. Um, 
it, it's not that it's bad. I just don't always see the point. Uh, I've, I've tried the one that's in Blender and I don't always get results that I like. So there you go. Regardless of the computer, you'd sit behind, you bring it to its knees in a couple of seconds. Complexity overhead says subdivision. <laughs> I'm not afraid of at the wall. Yeah, I have a very brute force approach to CG, but I think for years in like studios and stuff, I had to optimize, 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 optimize. And then once I started, you know, building my own machines and actually having a nice budget to work with, I just stopped caring, um, which again, because I'm making experimental graphics and it doesn't really matter all that much. It's not that big a deal. <laughs> um, if I was in production, obviously I would follow the uh, rules if you want to call them that a little bit more, but yeah. Um, so let's see other stuff while well, this is sort of finishing up. Wish the particle system could de detect colliding meshes or remove those instances. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping um, what you might call it, the, the geometry nodes are able to do that at some point because we have all this information, so that's uh, that's good. Um, yes, Ray Depth trick is awesome. Yes, it's a lot of fun. Try using the EO node for your masks. Uh, it doesn't work with optics uh, yet, I think. I think it's 2.92 that it might work, but I, I haven't, I wasn't using it for now because I was having some issues with it the other day. So, Jervo says, like for the stream title? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a dad now. I have to do the whole dad joke thing. Um, you could use facing as well as ray depth to catch the edges and mix them together. Yeah, you could probably do a lot of stuff. Um, but again, if I was just noodling in my own time, I would take uh, taking uh, a bit more time to do it right. But again, uh, due to time constraints, I don't want to have everybody sit here for hours even though i'm already kind of doing that but yeah um i find the background of this design cool thank you signals from the first pulsar that was discovered uh, as far as i know hope I didn't get that wrong no actually it's based on some macro photography i was doing the other day uh, on this uh, lichen type stuff so if we compare, there's obviously a lot more going on in, in the surface here, and I would have to add layers and layers of dots and other things. But again, as an approximation for an hour and a half, it's pretty cool. What time is it? Yeah, an hour and a half, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, you know, as an alternative to just going in and sculpting and texture painting it. So... Mm -mm, looks like Shrek's ears. Yeah, we ended up with Shrek's ears after all. Um, we should put some earwax in there just uh, just for fun. But um, ah, you meant my T-shirt? Yes, that that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Um, it definitely passes the desktop background test. Well, thank you very much. It is it is kind of fun. Uh, do you ever get completely broken procedural textures when rendering with optics? I always get that on my RTX card, and it always be like hell. Mm, I haven't encountered it yet. Um, but optics is definitely still very experimental when it starts running into running out of memory a little bit, it starts behaving really weird. So yeah. Uh, don't you like viewport denoise? It's nothing wrong with it. I'm just so used to seeing through the noise that I don't necessarily need a viewport denoiser for what I'm doing. Um, yeah, the way it like splotches everything out, especially when you're trying to see very small details, then a noisy image is, is sometimes going to give you a better representation. So, yeah. Um, it's like a forest of Shrek's ears. Nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just joined to Shrek. Yeah, everybody's gonna... uh, I don't know how it ended up being Shrek. I think somebody mentioned it at the start, and maybe like it just sat in the back of my head. <laughs> we ended up going full Shrek anyway. <laughs> hmm. But can it sparkle? I'm sure we could make it sparkle if we wanted to. Uh, let me get back to my screen here and maybe do a little bit of compositing as a last step. And then uh, and then I'll show some other stuff. Yeah, I mean, fun, fun little project experiment. Um, I think I might do more of this type of stuff in the future where I just try and attempt to make something that could be cool. Um, so I'll use nodes. I should have rendered like a missed pass or something, but 
Eh, it is what it is. It's a little bit noisy, but that's okay. Let's see what we can do with this. Um, first of all, let's go into our curves here and play with stuff. So let's add some contrast. It's maybe too contrasty. It's going to be somewhere in the middle there. So I contrast and then boost it up a little bit. Really like the way that looks. It's a little bit too contrasty, but that's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Bring down the exposure a little bit. Well, it's nice that it's kind of over bright. Again, this could do with a lot of tweaking, but let's finish it up just for completion's sake. And then I'll I'll show some other stuff before I go as well. And sort of a thank you for all the people that stuck stuck around <laughs> and watched me bumble through this a little bit. But yeah, this is typically, I would say, how um, I start a lot of stuff. Um, where I just try to find inspiration from things. And let me just disable that blur for a second so we can set it up to be in the right place. Bring the width up, hide up. And we kind of want to have our main boy down there to be the focus of our thing. Bring the width up and I changed this in the user preferences and I shouldn't have, where is it? Themes, UV image editor, background, theme space, window background. Now let's bring this back up a little bit. So at least I can see the edges of my image. There we go. Let's change the rotation. Where do I want this? That's kind of okay as it is, I guess. Bring up the height. Rotate a little bit more. Oh yeah, it rotates the other way around, doesn't it? There we go. Just want to offset this corner a little bit and then blur it out like crazy. Now you can see our eye just gets drawn to the other part a little bit more. It takes forever to load because it's like multiply. And then we could even create another one if we wanted to. Uh, and I'm just going to mute this for a second because it's going to stay slow. And let me change my options to smaller tiles so we get more, more stuff going on. Let's just multiply this for a second. And you'll see what I'm going to do with this in uh, just a minute. Getting a little bit tired, so apologies if I'm uh, not narrating as much as I was before. Let's move this dude over. There we go. Hello there, friend. We're going to make you look cool. No! Make this a little bit bigger. This a little bit bigger. And this might prove unnecessary, but that's okay. Uh, again, we're going to, no, not filter it, but blur it. Relative. Now we can delete the multiply node because I don't need that. And let's blur this maybe 10%. And what I'm going to do is just grab an RGB curves. Use that as the factor, and now we have a little mask. We can maybe push that up a little bit further. It's going to be really over the top now. Yeah, just a little bit. It's a bit much, maybe. Again, it's a little bit blown out because of the, the high contrast look. I really like the way that looks, so we're going to stick with it. Let's see if we go into our RGMB channels, if we can get a bit more flavor to it. Oh yeah, it's getting away from Shrek a little bit, but I, the green is a little bit overpowering. I like the warmth. Just take away the blue, we go back to Shrek, we add a little bit of blue. We go a bit more rainbow, but that's kind of nice. I don't know. What are we even doing at this point? <laughs> 
filter glare. Add in a glare or glow the usual. I'm so used to doing this by now. I should really just have some nodes ready to do this, but I always do it by hand. Let's see what glares when we put this in. Anybody see any difference there? Just on the edge here, maybe? Yeah, on the very edge of that one. That's funny. It's kind of what we need. So let's bring the threshold down a little bit. And let's multiply it back on so we can see the full image. There we go. He's got this little tiny glare around him. That's funny. Bring it down a little bit more. And I'm going to do my usual post-process filtering. So sharpen it up and then soften it out. I'm just going to make that grain look just a touch more filmic. There we go. Wow, I did not expect to get here. Well, I didn't really know what to expect because I didn't really prepare. Obviously, a lot of tweaking should still be possible, but there you go. That's cool. Fun little project. Let's save. Um, yeah, I'm happy to maybe throw this file up somewhere if people want to study it. I don't know if it's worth it. Let me know in the comments if you, if you want it. I'll upload it and then I'll... Uh, Okay, so let's do a bit more here, switch back over to my face so I can drink a little bit and answer a few more questions. Um, so stream is struggling because of GPU render. Yeah, it's weird because I set it to um, software mode. So it's actually encoding everything on the CPU, but yeah, we'll figure it out. I can always do it the other way around next time, see if that works better. But, um, okay. So. <laughs> that t-shirt pattern. Would some subsurface scattering make sense on such fleshy plant-like structures? Yeah, we already did it. You can see it's kind of bleeding through and it, and it makes it nice. Um, generally, subsurface scattering works pretty well for that kind of stuff, so. Uh, so yeah, I was crashing my blender. The thirty ninety is so fast. Yeah, it's crazy. I I remember last stream stream. Uh, I was using an AMD GPU, and I, I think I even said like, I'm probably not going to upgrade. And man, did I start having driver problems after that? Jesus, it just kept crashing and crashing. And I started looking for other stuff. And I started looking for um rtx cards and here in europe it's like a thousand euros for like a 3080 and then uh i was like well if i'm spending that much money i might as well look at how much a 3090 would cost because those 24 gigs are really useful and then i got super lucky on listing for god i don't know how much not that much more for a founder's edition playing it um won it or something in a contest and they just wanted to get rid of it because they needed the money they didn't need the card um, and they had like literally just post, yeah, super, super lucky. So they weren't selling it at a huge markup. And I was like, you know what, let's just do it. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's what business expenses are for. But yeah, um, it is fast. It's really, yeah, it is. So yeah, it's crashing my blender the trick was enable both CPU and GPU. Then they may have new commit, which fixed the optics crash. Yeah. Uh, Palmer Ultra X ears or stretch strikes ears like him. Uh, in the options, the compositing. I've never really noticed that it's that much faster. Um, in Photoshop, I tend to do a really small S curve to make a small half moon and blender. Well, it's, it is and it isn't. Um, really, all I'm doing is just put out, oh, is it streamed out? Okay, stream. Mm, 
Okay, I should be back. Let's hope so. Yes, I'm back. Yes, it looks like I'm back. Cool. Okay, so <laughs> last couple of uh, uh, so let's see. I'm gonna skip a few questions to kind of <laughs> get back. Sorry about that. Whew. Oh well, at least it's working now. That's okay. I uh, I think I messed something up on my end, but it's no big deal. So, uh, Devanchu, thanks for um, answering questions while I was gone. So, uh, yeah. Before I go, I think, let's just skip this. Before I go, I want to talk a little bit about some of the stuff that I did recently. That, uh, let's see. Our portfolio, is it in there already? No, it's not in there already. So, I was having fun with... Um, Vector, no, uh, volume displacement. So I was doing some some interesting things there. Um, so yeah, just grabbing one of those uh, MB Lab meshes and then doing a whole, uh, what is it? Volume displacement and volume to mesh, mesh to volume, all that kind of stuff. So you can get some really like interesting looking meshes and results and then smoothing it out and messing with it. So yeah, ended up uh, playing with these. I don't know if it's going to be just these three, but definitely uh definitely enjoyed making these so i think that's a very interesting place to start you can do a lot of stuff with it like if you play around with it and i'll actually open that second one real quick so i can show you how that looks like in 3d i think it's this one. Oh, switch screens yes ah oh, sorry about that wow good morning so here you can see them full screen so uh, as I was saying, I was using um, volume displace. Uh, so first bringing in a, a mesh of a, like a person, then doing volume to mesh, or mesh to volume, and then displacing it, and then volume to mesh again. Stream's cutting out again. My internet dying. Okay, the bitrate is kind of rough, but let me know if it's uh, if it's working properly. Uh, same here as well, so same idea. Um, really, really fun. And then uh, this one as well. Yeah, just like exploring it, but just to give you an idea of what they actually look like, you can see all the crazy stuff it's doing to that mesh. Like, you can really get interesting. I actually had to cut out a few pieces and sculpt it away here because um, it had like this weird sort of tentacle coming out of her head. Um, but yeah. If we open one of the other ones, three, that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, and I can give you guys a super sneak preview of something I'm working on. Um, so, yeah, this one got all garbled and crazy, but it's cool. Like, you can get some really, really interesting stuff out of this. Again, it's more just about exploration than it is about, like, uh, really getting it right. So, um... As a last thing, what I'm going to show you guys is uh, I've actually been working on another free resource pack. And uh, let's see, where is it? And it's a bunch of seamless for Moonscape. So it's a displacement and a diffuse texture and some kind of weird mask that you might be able to think. But um, yeah, so let's just fit the page. There we go. So you can see all of them. So this will be coming soon-ish. I'm still working on like a promo for it. So I'm not going to release it until I have a kind of fun uh, fun promo for it. But you can see it has 15 maps in total. If I go to the second one, there we go. So two like craters. And don't forget, they're all um, seamless as well. It says it here. I think there's only one that isn't seamless. And that's this third one. And that's because it's sort of the edge of a crater, um, which is really cool. And then these two, they are seamless in one direction only. So you can get like a nice ridge going. Um, but yeah, they're, they're a lot of fun. So I don't know if anybody uh, is able to use these, but I'll probably be releasing an 8K version and then a 16K version on the Blender Market um, for the people that really, really need it and want to want to support it. But you should be able to get really far with the 8K version anyway. So 
But yeah, they're all cool. So they've got cliffs, you've got just general sort of moonscape-ishness. Um, and then I don't know, I don't think I have a preview here. I'm already working on it, but I don't have anything set yet. But just to give you an idea, let's open that edit. There won't be any, uh, you can get pretty interesting. Um, and it's the, the thing isn't skip cached, so it's not going to play back properly working on it, but you can see, um, yeah, once this, uh, and I get some of the, the documentation and stuff, um, and I, what was I going to say? And, um, more and other stuff, I'll, uh, I'll throw them on the website and throw them on that lender market. So two last questions. I'm happy to, uh, to answer them. So did it cut out again? Hard time tonight. Yeah. It's wheeling me to get out of here, so it is what it is. Yeah, that's weird. I really have to figure out why it's jumping like Okay, uh, for maps to limit to this place. No, actually, oh man, it's still skipping. Why? Volume displaced, you can't use vertex weights and force through, but. Yeah, it is what it is. Um, that is all over the place. I need to figure out. Uh, let me have a look here to see if it's something in here. I can't imagine what's going on. I don't have anything that should be uploaded. It's weird. Anyway, um, cool. So yeah, I'm just going to end it. I'll have to figure out what's going on for next time, but joining. I hope you had a nice night. I'm sorry if I didn't get to your freaked out or whatever. Um, but uh, have a good one and enjoy your weekend. Bye.